We are on chapter 11. What punishment? Ryan Ward looked around her teacher's office. He had been here many times before, of course, but it had changed. It had only just been a week since Mr. Carter had taken over, but somehow in that time he transformed Mr. Fawcett's room, which had always been dusty and untidy, with piles of books and papers everywhere, into a sharp, clean, modern space. The walls, which used to be brown, were now bright white, and gleaming wax floorboards were visible where previously there had been an old coffee stained carpet. The depressing grey fire cabinets that used to line the walls were gone and a new desk, silver and wide and curved, had replaced Mr Fawcett's groggy wooden table with drawers that always stuck. I wonder why he chose these particular pants, Ryan, said Mr Carter, who was sitting on the edge of a desk with one leg on the floor, a bit like a model in a desk catalogue. Next to him on the desk was a pair of pants, the ones that had recently been on Benny the tortoise. They're the nearest I had to tortoise size, sir, said Ryan, who was standing in front of him. A bit old now, of course, but they did the business perfectly when I was three. Hmm, said Mr Carter. I'm sure I believe you there, Ryan. Not right, I'm not sure. He reached round and holding them as far away from him as he could, he picked up the pants. I think you've deliberately chosen these because the name tag was sewn into them. A name tag that says, and he turned the waistband towards him and looked disdainly, Ryan Ward. Well, sir, my mum's a stickler for name tags, always worrying about me losing stuff. Perhaps, Ryan, perhaps, or perhaps she wanted to be caught. Perhaps she wanted to be known as the perpetrator of the great tortoise in pants prank. The one that ruined your new head teacher's open afternoon because you are proud of being that person. He held the pants very close to Ryan's face as he said this. You know, I like what you've done with this place, said Ryan, pushing the pants down with one finger. So you can see over them. Pardon? This office used to be stuffy and horrible in here, but you've made it all new and flash. For a second, Mr. Carter looked genuinely pleased. Well, I don't think you're going to get around me by praising my sense of interior design, Ryan. But now you mention it, yes, I am happy with what I've done. Still got a few things to clear out from the old head's, de old head's teacher's days. Like this, he said, turning back to the desk. He held up a very small, very old-looking wooden box. The builders discovered it under the floorboards when they were redoing the floor. What is it, said Ryan. Not actually very interested, but keen to put off the punishment he knew was coming. It's a musical box, he thought. Hmm, so it doesn't seem to play any music. Ryan squinted at the box. I told him it was a weird little symbol, like a circle made out of two curved arrows. Mr Carter opened the box to reveal the mechanism, a series of tiny interlocking gold cogs and wheels. They remained still and no sound came out. Anyway, said Mr Carter, putting the box back down on the desk and speaking in a scary, let's get on with it voice. I know where you're just stalling, so Ryan took a deep breath and leant towards Ryan. You think that me running this school is a challenge to your naughtiness. You think I'll show him this new head teacher with his strictness and his new rules and his frightening manner. But you're going to have to forget all that because I'm shutting you down now. As the Carter's face was close to Ryan's. Really close. Ryan could smell his overbrushed, too pasty breath. He stayed firm though, did Ryan. He looked straight back at the new head teacher's fiery black eyes, as if to say, this may be fiery, but the butter is still not mounting in my mouth. But what punishment? What will convince you to give up this little campaign? I know you're planning. Well, obviously the tension. We can do that. That's the... That's in the bank. You're down to five of those this week. Yes, sir. And obviously a letter home to your mum, already written on its way. Yes, sir. But I know that will really, really pierce you, will it, Ryan? Will you make you wince and think again? I don't know. I don't know, sir. So Mr. Mar Mr. Carter moved away from Ryan towards the door. Well, something, or rather someone, you do know is this person, I think. He opened the door, standing in the corridor, looking very nervous indeed, was the owner, Baxter. In fact, I think she may be your best friend. That was chapter 11.